Are you looking to improve your alternate picking chops? Well then heed my advice and practice this lick and you're going to be going faster than Usain Bolt on a jet ski. Hey there kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. If you want to become an alternate picking demigod, it's really important that you do more than just focus on the speed at which your arm hand can move back and forth and produce those down and upstroke movements. You've got to study the super precise and complicated mechanics of string changing pick strokes. This means that in addition to your regular primary down and upstrokes, you also have to learn a secondary set of movements which are downstrokes that help move you to the next string you're trying to go to, and upstrokes that help you transfer to another string in a lick. It can be hard to learn these super subtle string changing mechanics, but whenever you have some licks to practice them with, like this cool A Lydian sequence I designed for you guys today, it can be a lot easier to make these a normal, automatic part of your playing. But before we delve into the string changing secrets of the stars, let's hear that lick again at stepdad speed. <laughs> And as always, full tabs for this lesson can be found over on my Instagram page at Ben Eller Guitars. Just search for hashtag Weekend Wank Shop 255. Find the tabs and start shredding today. If you learned something from this video and want to help support my channel, be sure to visit my Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Starting at the low, low price of $1 per month, you get access to downloadable tabs, backing tracks, a bunch of bonus lessons, and more. So head on over to that Patreon page and check it out today. Thanks a bunch. Okay, first things first, this lick is based around an A Lydian scale. It's a three note per string pattern, starting here from the low E string fret five. It's gonna go like this, five, seven, nine. Then on the next two strings, we're gonna play six, seven, nine. G string here is going to be six, eight, nine. And then play the same figure but moved up a fret on the B string. So you play uh, 7, 9, 10. So you got 5, 7, 9, 6, 7, 9, 6, 7, 9, 6, 8, 9, 7, 9, 10. You could also keep the scale pattern going onto the high E string here. And play the 7, 9, and 11 if you wanted to extend it. But this lick only goes to the root note here on the 10th fret B string. So that's where I'm going to stop it. So the kind of Paul Gilbert style sequencing that I came up with for this lick is pretty easy to understand. Let's kind of run through how I'm phrasing this, then we'll talk about the real meat of this lesson, which is the picking mechanics. This is all going to be alternate pick, starting off on a downstroke. And basically what you do is you play the first three notes on the low string, then you go to the A string here, and you got to play those three notes two times in a row. Okay, so you've had three notes here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see I didn't go up and down, it was just ascending, ascending again, okay? Three, six, and then on the next string, just play three notes again. So you end up with a total of 12 notes. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. After this, what you're gonna do is to start that same sequencing concept, only this time from the A string instead. So we're gonna play three notes on the A, six on the D, three on the G. Then start the same concept from the D string. So three on the D, six on the G, and three on the B. So, so far we should have this. And then just to make it sound a little bit more kind of soft and jazzy and sappy. I ended the lick here on the ninth fret B string, which is that G sharp note, the major seven of A, to really drive home that major seven Lydian kind of tonality. So the whole thing is gonna sound like this. And I personally envision that falling rhythmically as 16th note triplets. So that means six notes per beat. You could also imagine it as triplets at a really high tempo. Again, whatever floats your boat, you can feel it as. That's your triplets or sextuplets. Whatever floats your boat. 
Okay, so now that you've got the lick down, let's talk about those vital string changing mechanics that are gonna turn you into an alternate picking beast. Alternate picking on a single string isn't really challenging. It's when we start moving from string to string that things get complicated. Now, over on Troy Grady's channel, his incredible Cracking the Code series went to great lengths to describe how our favorite alternate pickers can move through the strings at high speeds by means of pick slanting, downward pick slanting and upward pick slanting which are two different picking styles that a lot of players utilize in order to move through the strings while alternate picking. I'm gonna to try to explain stuff a little bit differently in this lesson since I've already covered some of the pick slanting stuff in the past, but if you are hit to the Troy Grady, you know, language of pick slanting and stuff, here's how you would get through this lick. The first three note sequence ends on a downstroke, so this is going to be upwards pick slanting. When you play the six notes on the A string, that also ends on a downstroke, so you're still gonna be an upwards pick slant. So the first two strings here have been upwards pick slanting. Now when you play the three notes on the next string, that's gonna terminate on an upstroke. So that needs to be a downward pick slanted upstroke. So if you're trying to master all the two-way pick slanting kind of stuff, you'd get through this lick by using up slant, down slant, up slant, down slant, up slant, And that last line right there, the slant doesn't matter since you're not changing strings. But for the rest of us, let's try to break this stuff down in a little bit plainer terms. The fundamental problem with picking is that our strings are stacked vertically on top of each other. So when our pick is just moving down and up, you can see the tip of the pick is constantly caught in between the strings, right? If I'm just staying on one string indefinitely, that's fine. If you're playing your favorite Dick Dale song and you're just tremolo picking away, totally fine, it doesn't matter. The problem arises when we start to change strings and our pick is in between here and we have to kind of jump over this string to get to it. In order to get your alternate picking string changes really fast and really clean, what you've got to think about is the very last note that is happening on that string and how your pick needs to get away from the strings whenever you do it. That way it'll make it easier to move to the next string. Again, if your pick is caught in between strings like this, like when I do those first three notes, down, up, down, and I'm trying to do an upstroke on this string, I have to hop over it, right? But what if that last downstroke that I made got me out and under this string? See how the pick is now underneath where the A string would be? This is critical. Make the string changing motion built into the pick stroke. So in other words, don't go down, up, down, move, up, down, up. Go down, up, and then a downstroke that takes you underneath the string that you're about to play next. If that last downstroke on that string that I made takes me out from the strings, and actually underneath the A, like that right there, now all I have to do is come up and I'm right where I need to be. Now, this is really important. What I want you to do in order to practice this sort of escaping downstroke is just to do those three notes and then freeze frame. Just completely stop where your picking hand is. If you're doing this right, your pick should be kind of in between the A and D strings. It should have flown over the A and gotten under there, you know? If you freeze frame and your pick is in between these two strings, you need to go out further, okay? Get underneath that A string since we're trying to snag it with that upstroke next. It's kind of like a downstroke with an overhang. I kind of think about the way that like a roof line on a house is. You know how it doesn't just come to the edge of the house, it kind of extends out over the edge. That's kind of what this pick stroke should look like. And think about that angle that a roof line has too, you know? And it makes you kind of automatically have that down and out, getting under the A string approach that you're gonna need to make this work. Now, the six note phrase that's on the A string also ends on a downstroke. So that needs to be a downstroke that again, ends with that kind of roof line pitch. That way we get underneath the D string. Because again, we're going from our last note on our A string being a downstroke to the first note on the D string being an upstroke. So that needs to be a downstroke that gets you out and away from the strings. Again, not a straight downstroke, a down and out stroke, that roof line downstroke to get you underneath the D string. So if I was to kind of demonstrate here on my, on my hand fingers, it would look like down, up, one of these string changing downstrokes that not only hits a note, but gets me underneath this next string. Up, down, up, down, up. Boom, there's another one of those roof line downstrokes to get me underneath the D string to complete the sequence. So, so far we've had down, up, a string changing downstroke, so that we're underneath the A string now. Up, down, up, down, up, down. There's that string changing downstroke again. Now I'm underneath the D string. Now from here you gotta go up, down, up. 
The last note on that string is an upstroke, and we need to get back to the A string to restart this sequence, right? So if on the D string here, if I have just a little shallow up, down, up like this, I'm nowhere where I need to be. I need to be above this A string, right? So if I go up, down, up, and I'm stuck in between these two strings, I'm not where I need to be. This last upstroke you're making on this string needs to have kind of the same concept we were talking about with those roof line downstrokes. It needs to be an upstroke that gets me out and away from the strings and above this one that I'm trying to get to. Up, down, up. Do you see how that put the tip of the pick above the string that you're about to be playing next? That's a special string changing upstroke. Kind of feels like I'm scooping like a like a chip in some dip or something like that, you know? It's kind of a scoop. And whenever you do that scoop motion, it's gonna get you above this A string where you need to be to restart the sequence. So again, to elaborate on this, these aren't just plain down and up strokes that we're using to change strings. It's a down stroke that takes us out of the strings. It's an up stroke that takes us out of the strings. Again, while you're on the string playing 100 notes, it doesn't really matter where your pick is going, but on note 101, if you're about to change strings, if it's an upstroke, it should look like this. If it's a downstroke, it should look like this. As you're learning these string changing pick strokes, it's okay for them to be a little bit more exaggerated and pronounced like what I was doing just a second ago. Uh, you'll notice whenever I played it really fast at the intro there, those movements I was making were almost invisible. That's just something that happens as you start playing faster and faster. Those angles get a lot more subtle, but they're still going on. That last downstroke I'm doing is still getting out from the strings. The last upstroke I'm doing is still getting out and away from the strings. One of my Skype students really summed this up super well one time when he kind of compared it to his experience in martial arts and stuff, where like your first day in the dojo, somebody throws a punch at your head and you jump five feet across the room in order to dodge it. But the more you practice and the more you learn, you learn that really you just need to move your head like an inch that way and the punch will dodge you. It's okay for things to be exaggerated at first. Everything will shrink and get more subtle as you practice these things and make them a part of your playing. And guys, this is also where we run into the long running fallacy of the importance of teeny tiny ass pick strokes. This is one of those things I see guys just obsess with, is trying to make the smallest pick stroke humanly possible. But in reality, that can kind of sabotage you as soon as you start trying to change strings. Okay, again, if you're playing just on one string and doing those big Ingve style one string ascending runs or whatever, tiny pick strokes are fine. The pick is already where it needs to be. It's already on just one string going up and down. But the minute that you're moving to another string, you need to make a bigger pick stroke. See, look at it this way. Even if you're doing all this angling stuff, right, like we're talking about, like if I was playing through this lick and I made the teeniest, tiniest little down, up, down, do you see how my pick is nowhere where it needs to be? Again, we're fixing to go up on this string, but if I make this teeny, tiny down, up, down motion, then I still have to physically move my hand under the A string in order to make that note happen, like this. See, I'm nowhere near the A, so then I have to make this secondary movement to get under it. And that is going to be really hard to do at high speeds because you're essentially adding another movement into the mix. Whereas if you just made that last pick stroke a little bigger, so that way it not only strikes the note but moves you to where you need to be, again, it's a dual purpose stroke. It hits a note and moves you to the next string that you need to be on. You're gonna be much better off in the long run than making a teeny tiny movement and then making another movement to get under this string. Again, really pitch that hand out whenever you're practicing these things. Exaggerate it. Make sure that you're getting under the string that you're shooting to get to next. Same with this upstroke right here. Again, scoop that thing out that we get above the A string to start the sequence over again. Practice with the metronome, exaggerate the movements, do whatever you need to do to make these string changing pick strokes a regular part of your playing. What all comes down to is when you're alternate picking through a line, really focus on the last note that you play on that string. And if it's a downstroke, make sure it's one of those roof line downstrokes. And if it's an upstroke, make sure it's one of those scoops. Again, just like scooping a chip out from some dip or something like that, just pulling it out like that to make sure you get out and away from the strings 
for string changing success every time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for new lessons coming at you every single week. And if you want to show some support for the channel, be sure to visit that Patreon page, patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but it's time for me to make some lunch and then head out for a full day of teaching lessons to cool people like y'all. But as for you, I recommend you get away from the computer, fire up the metronome, and start working on improving your shredding skills today. Less clicking, more picking.